Hey, Foot Clan, you do not win your league at the draft. You win it right now. When the injuries start to pile up and you read between the lines with those start-sit decisions, the trade talks, the waiver wire pickups, we are here to help. If you become an official Foot Clan member, not only do you get access to an extra episode every week, but you get access to the Stream Finder tool, the start-sit tool, expanded version, the flex rankings, the premium projections, the snapshot tool, a free copy of the Ballers book. <sighs> and community access and our new Injury Blitz podcast too. Check it all out at jointhefoot.com. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Go, 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 go. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Whew. That was fire, Andy. <laughs> I know that was simply a makeup for uh, what you did. The disrespect that you just placed upon our man, Darren I, Waller, cutting off the goo 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 Shame on you. It's like we, do, like we didn't have the control to fix that. But no, we needed to get into the episode because it's in a, the most important waiver show we've had. Of all time. In a while. So many injuries. If you made it through without an injury, congratulations. Uh, you have an advantage over the rest of your league because you are in the minority. But we have a we have a great show today. We have our quarterback streamers on the episode. We have the big waiver uh, breakdown. Some news to talk about. Had a great Monday night football game. I love the NFL. It's be- great. Because... Things like last night happen all the time. The the difference between great and you know not so great. It, it's just so tight in the NFL. And the Raiders had a Derek Carr. Derek Carr had an absolutely outstanding game. Send in the car. Send in the car. You must have been so happy. I am thrilled. Between Josh Allen and Derek Carr to start the year, they're a combined four and zero. Derek Carr had an like. Uh, just an incredible game passing to 11, 12 different receivers, getting well, the ball. He pa- it, everything was to Darren Waller. That's how I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, the majority That's was. That's how the box score sees it as well. I don't understand how he turns invisible until the catch. Yeah, because he's gigantic and a walrus? I just don't understand it because they, they just didn't cover him. I mean, plays that you would think, all right, we're at the goal line. If a player leaks out, who do you think it's going to be, New Orleans? <laughs> do you think it'll be the guy that's already got 37 targets? But, but see, that's the trap. Like, if if you line up Jumbo, uh, you're the Raiders. You're Jumbo package, and you're going to naked boot out and have, and have a tight end roll out. It's going to be like Foster Moreau. It's going to be Jason Witten with it. Okay, am, am I the only one who saw that Jason Witten's got, like, the one eye strip going on no does he really i it looked like it i cannot confirm to, nor deny what is but, happening but and like uh jason went got not, to vegas and not, he bought not, a miata and he put I, one eye strip on not not that i have the uh qualifications to say what is and what is not cool <laughs> but that's not cool, man. <laughs> you're Jason Witten. You're not nearly uh, cool enough but to pull, the pull off a one eye strip. I'm very. You're, you're not Tyron Matthew. I'm very confident that whatever Jason Witten does, <laughs> that then becomes officially uncool. Oh no! So it, yeah, it it's confirmed. It's the old dad when he starts. It's like when when dads start dabbing, and you're like, oh, dabbing's got, out. We got dabbing's gone. <laughs> he did dab on the field too yesterday. Probably. No. Uh, Witten, when you see the contrast between Monday Night Football Witten in the suit and then shaved head, one eye patched oh, Witten. So good. The Raiders. But anyway, my, my point was you would – How mi- did this become about Jason Witten? Because that's the misdirection. Like the, the player who should leak out is you wouldn't expect. It's Foss Moreau. It's Jason Witten. But now they're like, no, we're, we're, we will go with the obvious one. We'll go with the best receiver on this team, Darren Waller, who rolls out. It is just a, a, a gentle – Rookie of the year, t- underhand toss to Darren Waller for a touchdown. So the Raiders uh, beat the New Orleans Camaras 34-24. Uh, to 24. 
Alvin Kamara had 13 carries and nine catches. This team didn't look the same on offense without Michael Thomas. But an impressive game. Josh Jacobs had 27 carries. Really wasn't a huge fantasy game for him. Uh, he but 27 carries and three catches again, which is, you know, you like to see that number three or above every week for Josh Jacobs. Jacobs was also in and out of the game. I'm not exactly sure what his – what he was struggling with, we saw him on the sideline getting like his his thigh or his hip flexor getting worked on. You saw him get – so he went out, came back in, then got horse collared, tackled, and kind of got a little shook up from that. So it, Yeah, he went in the blue tent. I, I think he's fine, but it's, it's something you're going to have to pay attention to. There were 34 total targets, so 30, 34 targets by the receiving core in Las Vegas, and 16 of them were Darren. Waller. How many uh, passes did Jalen Richard catch? <laughs> Are you making fun of the pronunciation? Is that how we say it? I, like, I've I, never heard it until last night, and as soon as I kept hearing Richard, I was like, are we saying it right? I don't know. I, maybe. But if it is Richard, I am in on that. That is fun <laughs> to say. Any other takeaways from the game last night? You saw Brian Edwards with a couple of receptions, nothing too spectacular. Only one for Henry Ruggs. Traquan Smith, 5 for 86, looked uh, like the best receiver there. Yeah, but, I mean, the reality is – Ooh, Emmanuel of, Sanders. Oh, yeah. goodness. I mean, there's the question of can you drop him? Yes. Yeah. If he can't show up in this matchup, in this game, without Michael Thomas, you it's then he's irrelevant. Um, but Michael Thomas was my big takeaway. I mean, actually, to be honest, Drew Brees looked not good. And I mean that as far as, like, Maybe it's a timing thing. He's used to only throwing to Michael Thomas, and so now he's got to throw to other people. And it, but he missed his throws often. Uh, you know, the throws were short. The throws were a little too long. It, left, right, and center. If he wasn't dumping it off to Alvin Kamara, it was a difficult catch for the receiver um, too often, way more than you ever see Drew Brees throw. So I don't know if it was, again, just missing Michael Thomas but it gave me a little bit of the worry, a little bit of like I had the same one. Oh no, yeah. So I'm 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 reserving judgment. But if next week Breeze comes out and looks off, I mean, at some point age catches up to people. I'm not saying that's here with Breeze, but I am saying I'm watching it now. 41 years old was not driving the ball down the field. No, he <clears throat> did. He looked bad. Yeah, I mean, he's still accurate, but if yeah, you you're have right. if you have Alvin Kamara as the kind of he corrects a lot of what could be wrong. He's really good. Yeah, I mean, he's just – and he's, you know, Breeze looks downfield, read one, read two, Alvin Kamara. Read the, one, read two, Alvin Kamara. And those check downs where uh, you see the ball go to Kamara, he's obviously going to catch it, and then the linebacker is the one who's trying to close in on Kamara, and you can see he is not even struggling or thinking about cutting in. He just scoots – Scoots out to the outside. No, he giggles a little bit while he sees the linebacker it's approaching. Wild. I love both of these running backs, but when Josh Jacobs gets the ball, you see him put in maximum effort. He gets the ball. He runs as hard, as fast as he can. Every time Kamara gets the ball, it looks like he's just he's just jogging out there. Yep. He's just, just like, surfing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's just surfing. He's Hang just loose, gliding man. past everyone. <laughs> Tubular. Tubular. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, the fantasyfootballers.com. We've got an injury recap article from Matthew Betts. It is a novel this week, but you want to check that out so you're ready to go for your waiver wire. Join the foot.com. That's the fantasy football community, and you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Raiders are 2 0. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, we have some good news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some good injury news to start this off. Devontae Adams, the hamstring injury does not look serious, nor a threat to playing time. Matt LaFleur says he wanted to go back in the game, so he should be back. Yeah, yeah this is great. Mike brought this up yesterday, the fact that they were up, and LaFleur said he wanted to see how the next few drives go. If we need him, they, we would have put him back in. They did not need him. Um, and so that's great news. If I was a player last week and I started seeing all the – there were seven ACL tears, <laughs> oh, I would have man, pulled yes. my hamstring on purpose oh. just to get off the field. Oh. I would have been like, yeah, it's a little tight. I'm going to wait for week three. Chris Godwin, out of the concussion protocol, will play in week three. You don't need to start Potty Miller. Uh, Matt oh. Patricia said Kenny Galladay is really close. He almost played in week two. The Lions didn't want to risk an aggravation. I think that is – 
wise. This got, is great news. Got I the just, sandpaper out. I love hearing this. That's just fun stuff. Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay. Yes. Week three. Fantastic. All right. Enjoy, enjoy that now, news. Uh, let it wash over you. Take a moment. And here we go. Now, Jason, in our league of record where you were 2-0 and oh, and we face each other this week, and mm -hmm. it's going to be you know quite the battle, you have um, a player named Christian McCaffrey. Had. Had. He yeah. is... He is going Did to you be drop him? <laughs> yeah, oh. I will, I will, I'll go pick him up. Uh, four to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. The, the thing is. is and with, you, you got off better than the Saquon owners. Yeah, with Christian McCaffrey, um, th they are going to – he will come back early. Like four to six weeks, that means he's going to be out three weeks. And when he comes back, he will be – not 100%. I was going to ask it's you. It's what we yeah. saw with Alvin Kamara and Saquon, and yet you will 100% have to start him oh, if no. he's on so the you field. Know, you know your future and Ex the trap you're in. Exactly, and I do not like it. You're walking in the jungle, and you see the trap and the leaves set over it, it's and you're like, I'm going <laughs> in. So I double what if negative. What not a trap? <laughs> yeah. I, I double negative. I then went and traded for James Conner. Yes, you yes. did. So, look, two wrongs. Let's make a right, baby. <laughs> Drew Locke will be sidelined at least two weeks. Oh, my goodness. That means that the uh, the Denver Broncos, they had to go out and they had to make a transaction. Got to get a backup. I got a snake, man. Yes. Blake Bortles, a one-year deal. Now, is he backing up Jeff Driscoll. Oh, yeah. Look, the the Broncos have a plan, and it's for one big score for <laughs> Jeff Driscoll. Uh, Jeff Driscoll is fine. It, we, we saw him in relief in Detroit. and How did Bortles slip into this third tier of – I mean, I assumed he was a backup at least. At, at, yeah, he, I mean, he was the Rams' backup at one point. I know. I'm not sure. Know. I'm not sure what happened. But, yeah, it'll, it will be Jeff Driscoll, I believe, moving forward. And it seems like there is optimism that the the two weeks given for Drew Locke, it will be accurate, and he'll be back sooner than later. So Blake Bortles is just here. Oh! Cortland Sutton. Ah! This was a little bit of a surprise because we didn't know how bad the injury was. He's out for the season with a torn ACL. Yeah. yeah I mean, we when we were going over all of the injured players, his name was left out. And then he said, wait, what about me? Yeah, and then it was the news was well he kind of tore up his knee and you go, well, what does that mean? What 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 does that mean? And it and was it meant bad things. It was a torn ACL. So Jerry Judy and Noah Fant, Noah Fant become clear. You know, look, the quarterback play is not going to be great there right now, but the targets have to go to someone. Those two will benefit if there are plus matchups. I think both of those players are. Uh, going to be weekly starts. And Judy and Lamb over the first two weeks of the year now with this injury, both seem very relevant for fantasy. Yes. And uh, K.J. Hamler. Yeah, we'll be talking about Hamler in the waiver part of the show. All right. Cam Akers diagnosed with separated cartilage in his ribs. That sounds bad, uh, uncomfortable. That sounds terrible. Yeah. You want your cartilage non-separated. Yeah, I yeah, want it together you want for it, sure. Day-to-day. Uh, -day. So he he's not been ruled out but Daryl Henderson is going to be a discussion today. Malcolm Brown, he's expected to play as well. The situation seemed like maybe the, you know, go spend a ton of fab on Daryl Henderson. We'll talk about that today too, but mm -hmm. it's looking a little bit less clear with the Buffalo matchup. Uh, I, I think it is pretty clear. I mean, all three guys have a chance to suit up, except one has separated cartilage, the other has a broken pinky finger. Well, if all three are active, if do you feel great? confident though with Daryl Henderson that's think, my concern yeah I, I, I personally do. do I think Daryl Henderson week, yeah. yes not a long-term play but this week I think Daryl Henderson will be the guy Jimmy Garoppolo is week to week he's not been ruled out Raheem Mostert likely won't play that is a good report because you didn't know what was wrong it's an MCL sprain it was considered minor uh week three against the Giants coming up again those are going to have this is the challenge. I mean, the, the the report on Brown and Akers, it impacts how much you might invest on Henderson. Now, you guys are both confident. But then if Mostert does go out there, are you are you investing in heavily in McKinnon and heavily in, in Jeff Wilson Jr. in this matchup? Not, not Jeff Wilson, but I will invest heavily in McKinnon Agreed. even if Mostert will be there because Tevin Coleman is going to miss time, and we've already seen with Mostert 
healthy and being the complete lead dog, McKinnon is fantasy relevant. And now you've got Mostert, you know, he's even if he's active, he's not at 100%. They're not going to just lean on him and, uh, you know, give him 15 carries. I think McKinnon's going to be a great play this week against the Giants. And I'm expecting Mostert to be out. Are you playing through an MCL sprain? we got some stuff to talk about. Yes, we do. My name is Jeff. Uh, Paris Campbell <laughs> out indefinitely, a PCL injury. Uh, not even a timetable. And then we got even more news about Tyrod Taylor. Apparently he was given a pregame injection and then had the shortness of the breath, went to the hospital. Um, the injection was for you know, pain dealing with the rib injury. He was going to play with a flak jacket from a Friday rib injury. They gave him an injection. He didn't react well to it. Anthony Lynn came out and demonstratively said, Tyrod Taylor gives us the best chance to win. He came out and said, look, we didn't win this past game. Because yeah, oh. you punted. Oh, yeah. I, I, if, if Anthony Lynn's opinion is Tyrod is the best chance to win, fine. Like, I, I can't really argue with that at this point of the season. But to go with the evidence of we lost the game, Justin Herbert gave you several opportunities to win that game and your defense. But and you were playing against the Super Bowl yeah. champion Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, well, are you guys throw. turning on Anthony Lynn? No, I, I don't. No, I don't want to. I love the man. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't to. want to. I love the man, but I don't actually like the coach. Yeah. I don't. I don't it, like watching watching Hard Knocks made me respect him. But I I remember thinking when comparing him to McVay, like the the actual football acumen, football you know head coaching. I thought. No, he's I. He, I didn't see things I loved. Yeah, the punt. I know hindsight's twenty twenty. If you if you make the call and you you know you get it, it's a genius call. You don't get it, you're an idiot, and that's how football works. It's well, t- it, tough to give it to a rookie and expect him to make that play. But it, well, I could give it to Austin, give it to Austin Eckler on a on a sweep. I mean, sure, whatever. No, I, but I, I get it. Not Just here, don't there. give it's a, it to the Chiefs. But then it's com- right. It's compounded by I hate the the timeout as they are snapping to kick a field goal. I yeah. think it I, – I get it. It's in the rules. You're allowed to do it, but it's just such a Bush League thing to do. If you're going to freeze him out, let him, let him sit and stew in it. Don't give him a practice kick. I, I highly disagree with you're that. You're saying the last second nature yes. of it as opposed to just calling it – Yes. Well before, let him sit. In. Okay, I because res- it seems a little bit gimmicky, right? It's like, hey, it is. what's that? I got your nose. Um, <laughs> Brashad Perryman considered. <laughs> that's, that's very Matt Nagy. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Brashad Perryman's considered week to week. Crowder was out last week. We'll see what happens there. DJ Chark limited in Monday's practice with a chest injury. One interesting fact on DJ Chark, he is fourth in targets on yeah. his team through two weeks. It's he's, not great. No, he's it's not. delivered um, – I believe his catch rate is 100%. It is, but it's it's a little bit. We, come on, Gardner. We need we need more. Maybe and, Thursday night. And that's why he was limited on Monday's practice because he plays on we'll Thursday. We'll talk about Keelan Cole to, this week. Yeah, we, this well, week. before we get into the Mondo waiver section of the show. Mondo. It's it's going to be Mondo. want to thank today's sponsor, Head & Shoulders. Look, Foot Clan, you know that Head & Shoulders, they are taking it up to 100. They are taking your hair up to 100, keeping you free, keeping you safe from those dandruffy flakes. Get them no, out of my life. you don't want those. Get them out of my life. That's not 100. But part of that is we are also – Jason Witten has flakes. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He has no hair. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, but each and every week on Thursdays, we are declaring our players that they're going to take it up to 100. Uh, a little bit tough to start the, the year, but we rebounded, had a very solid week here. Jason Deontay Johnson. Ooh, ooh, I'm two had, for two. Like that's not even just a hundred. Deontay Johnson, hundred and ten is he's the number one. Yeah, in he's the number one wide receiver. Uh, JJ tweeted out our good friend of the show, JJ Zach Reeson. Two players have had a thirty plus percent target share each of the first few weeks. Thielen, Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is for real. David Montgomery had a really big bounce back. Unfortunately, Scotty Miller dropped. His chance to take it to 100. He was there. He was there. The opportunity was there. Yeah, he took it up. To, and then a couple took it up to 2.7 fantasy points. <laughs> a couple flakes fell upon his shoulder. Get that man some head and shoulders. <laughs> so, so stay tuned for Thursday. We'll have three more picks of guys to take it up to 100. Take your hair up to 100 at with Head and Shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week. And Foot Clan, we want to thank HelloFresh. 
Great longtime sponsor, an incredible addition to your life. You don't know what to make for dinner. You're sick of having the same things over and over. Hello. Sandwiches again? Yeah. Get That's my kid. Hello by Fresh. The way. <laughs> Cut the crust off. <laughs> Pre-measured ingredients. Mouthwatering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. It's America's number one meal kit. They're, they're easy to make, you know, quick to follow the directions. Everything pre-measured. They, they deliver in this nice brown bag where I can put all the garbage as I go along. It makes me, you know, the cleanup is not so difficult. All of these meals are made in about 30 minutes or less. It's absolutely wonderful. And, and they're you know, delicious. They're, yeah. they're delicious. You can actually save money when, when you compare grocery shopping, and you don't have to go out and do all of this. It comes right to your door. It's absolutely excellent. We highly recommend it. And you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and use the code Fantasy80 to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80. Use the code Fantasy80 for $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. Full stream ahead. I feel like I should have done like a warm up jog Ugh. before this section. This is serious business. Well, and it sounds like we have. Uh... Oh, yeah, I, I hit. <laughs> I hit full stream ahead, didn't I? We didn't even notice. No, I was, I, I was distracted by the Derek Carr picture up on the screen. Do oh, I want to give, him, give, real give him a real one? Put me in, coach. How would how would all three of us not even notice? Because I was getting in the zone over here. I blocked everything out. I was like a fighter headed to the ring. Well, yeah. Streamers are so close. So you're you're basically you doing put the them same in. thing. You're 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 streaming wide <laughs> hey, receiver and running judge, back sometimes. Is there any other drops you want to hear right now? Or nah, I'm no, good for now. Al, I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. No problem. <laughs> I was probably distracted by the fact that um, I've got a pretty tough drop candidate question for you too. Uh, the top candidates, like, because if you're going to sign someone, you got to let somebody go. You got to say true. farewell. You got to make a determination two weeks into the year that you're done. Well, Paris Campbell, that one might be easy that's, enough. Yeah, right? I would, I would be willing yeah. to drop. Uh, Scotty Miller, okay, see you later. Anthony Miller, goose last week, yeah. barely on the field, actually. Yeah, get get out of here. Emmanuel Sanders, sayonara. Um, but what do you do with Michael Gallup? Because you hold. that's Okay, you're a hold? It, yeah, that's, it's a definite it's hold. It's 100% hold for me. I And I will, in fact, if Michael Gallup has another struggle this upcoming week, heading into week four, he would still be a hold. If, he ha if we have struggling through week four, then I am willing to move on. If you want to try and actively trade him, put him as uh, the extra treat on a package, I'm okay with that move, but I'm still going to hold it, on to It Gallup. is worth adding on to what you just said. A very common you, – you might look at the waiver wire and see someone you really want to add, and you don't have someone to drop, and you're saying, do I drop Michael Gallup? The, that's where you go out. Hopefully your your league does not have the giant you know trade windows of 24-hour monitoring. Get that garbage out of your league. But assuming you're not, that's a perfect like processing, strategy. processing, you're saying? 24-hour yeah, processing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, to veto. Vote and veto these trades. You should never so veto stupid. a trade. Um, but you can you can add Gallup to another player and go trade a two-for-one deal to upgrade that other player, and that frees up a spot to add. It's not just Gallup and Love it. Joe Mixon that you're trading for uh, Josh Jacobs. It, it's You're getting Josh Jacobs and someone off the waiver wire. Yeah, I think I view Gallup in the same range as Russell Gage right now. Because you have multiple options. We'll talk about Dalton Schultz today. Mm -hmm. you got four different targets in Dallas to kind of hope you get right if you put one in your lineup. Sterling Shepard, would you drop Sterling Shepard? Yes, especially with the, the turf toe problem. All right, let's start at the wide receiver position with some waiver pickups. Uh, I think the main pickups, the, the uh, you know, Jerry Judy is on the short list. He might be rostered he's rostered in 74 percent of espn leagues that's not a likely candidate but if he's out there you should grab him brandon yeah. cooks fits that category too brandon cooks had eight targets this past week he was on the field 90 percent of the time and we don't know what's 
And what happened with Will Fuller? Yeah, it's a it's a tough matchup coming up against Pittsburgh, but he should certainly be rostered. Yeah, these these are the guys they're probably on a team in in your league, but always check because do not just make the assumption that someone already picked these guys up. Brandon Cooks, Jerry Judy, and my number one would be Robbie Anderson, and we're showing a rostered percentage of sixty two percent in Yahoo. So that there are leagues where Robbie Anderson is still there. So yeah, Rob, but, he's been used. 10 targets this past week, nine catches, screen passes, short area targets. Now you have no Christian McCaffrey for yes. uh, the short term. So who's at the top of your wide receiver list this week? Besides besides those guys. Yeah, so besides those guys, uh, it's, it's hard to really prioritize a wide receiver right now since the, the running backs are, you know, th that's where the heavy action is is at but if I'm picking up a let's say a spot starter it's going to be Corey Davis I know that Corey Davis didn't really come through with a big game against Jacksonville three catches he did have a touchdown he's on the field a ton and he gets to play Minnesota mm. so if you're looking for that one week guy and you're going to go uh you know cheap while while everyone else is going burning huge waiver priorities they're burning through fab to get these running back replacements, and you don't really need that, Corey Davis, I think, is a is a fine, cheap option you can grab. Yeah, I'm not spending up on any of the wide receivers this week. I need the the fab or your you know your waiver priority for running backs. Um, but Russell Gage, you brought him up as a comp to Michael Gallup, a guy that we would not drop. He needs to be rostered right. because it's a really good passing offense. Maybe he's the two, maybe he's the three. Russell Gage is the three, but I, it, how does Matt Ryan with that defense not throw for – 5,000 yards this season. Um, 12 targets week one, nine targets week two. He's currently the the wide receiver 14 in fantasy through Goodness. two weeks. So he, su he should certainly be rostered, and he's available in, in the vast majority of leagues. I've got a couple other interesting, maybe they're holds. Maybe you pick them up and you, you put them on your bench, but if you have the ability to do it, a couple of rookies, Jalen Rager and Michael Pittman. Um, with Paris Campbell out, Michael Pittman saw six targets in this game, played 91% of snaps. There's an opportunity there for Pittman. And then Jalen Rager, he's been on the field as well, 84% of snaps, four targets this past week, has a great Cincinnati matchup, and I've been impressed with the limited work we've seen from Jalen Rager so far. I would prioritize Rager over Michael Pittman, but I'm with you that I, I love both of these players. Michael Pittman's opportunity is unfortunately at the expense of Paris Campbell, but – Pittman was a high second round pick. He incredible college pedigree, athletic profile. He's a stud. Like he should we should be talking about Michael Pittman for years as now one of the top wide receivers. But this year as the rookie, I'm going to take Rager. I'm going to take Carson Wentz and the Eagles to kind of right that chip on the passing game. Yeah, I'm, stop sucking Carson Wentz <laughs> cuz I love you and you're great, but you have really been playing poor ball. Uh, a player I think we'll talk about next week more than this week. So if you have a deep bench and you want to stash and wait and see, Keelan Cole, seven more targets this past week. I think he's a good player. Six for 58 and a touchdown. He scored in the first two weeks of the year. Has the Miami Thursday night game in primetime. So if he has another good game, that'll be three straight with Gardner, who seems more reliable now for like a sustainable amount of targets and moving this offense. Certainly, and the uh, and then Nikhil Harry. Yeah, that's the that's the big missing name to me is Nikhil Harry. Twelve targets this week, eight for seventy two. Totally overshadowed overshadowed by Julian Edelman and his monster game. But I mean, Cam's moving the ball. Yes, and Cam is throwing absolute laser beams. Well, he's he's got an offensive line here that can pass block. But, he, but I'm saying that the, we had the concerns about the shoulder. Like, what's the velocity and that. Cam winding up and letting the ball rip. That thing is going a thousand miles an hour right now. Yeah, hours, whatever. Yeah, I thought I thought that's what I heard. A little, a few extra s's. I, I will say this: I it's don't fine. think that the volume is going to be what it was this past week when Seattle was able to actually move the ball and and be as you know. It didn't seem like they were playing the New England defense. It seemed like they were you know a knife through butter. So that could affect the passing volume. I don't think you're going to see 12 targets. I agree completely, but the one thing that I think Harry has is that by the end of this season, 
Harry could very, very well be the number one option on this team. Right now it's Julian Edelman and Harry's the two, but how often does Julian Edelman make it through a season? He's older and he was just getting lit up on the field. I mean, he was lighting it up, but he was also taking some monstrous hits. Um, and at some point, I think Harry will be thrust into the wide receiver one position. I'd love for him to be on my roster when that happens. There's a couple other rookies I want to highlight. These are not as high in priority as Rager and Pittman. These are uh, guys that you're you're probably putting on the bench. You're not going to play immediately. But we mentioned him at the top of the show, KJ Hamler was a, a high draft pick. Wide receiver year. for wide, Denver. Thank you. Wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. Cortland Sutton is out for the year. When that happened, K.J. Hamler on the field a bunch. We, he saw seven targets. K.J. Hamler is a Deshaun Jackson type of player. Is He a, He is a home run field stretching guy. I think he is absolutely worth putting on the bench and seeing what happens. And then the other guy, Chase Cool, Chase Claypool, my man from the Chase North. Cool. Chase Cool. Look, Chase Cool. <laughs> Well, he has gone with the official moniker of Mapletron because he is from the north. I like it. I'm in on Chase, Chase Claypool. This is a longer-term hold, though. This is you are picking up Chase Claypool and envisioning the future in a couple weeks. I mean, he's already been a beast, making his mark on the field for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he is already encroaching on James Washington's snaps. He is stealing them away like a succubus. And it will not be that long before Claypool is the wide receiver three, the official field stretcher for the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Goodness. Pitts big. Pitts big. big. Chase, Chase cool. cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's probably uh, pretty fair. If we're talking about Russell Gage or Michael Gallup, if Claypool takes over the number three role, which I think he's caught all five of his targets this year for 100 and something yards and had the big play last week. Um, Where are you with Traquan Smith? He had the big game. I know that – the, the the Saints spot were, start. They were kind of playing catch up, as Brooks likes catch up mode. But are, do you feel like you can trust Traquan Smith? Drew Brees talked him up a lot this off season. Well, after seeing the lack of Emmanuel Sanders in his, I mean, why not? Talked right. him down a lot this episode. <laughs> yeah, I I think he's a spot start. Right. I think he's somebody you could look to when Alvin Kamara is not open. Then then he has to pass it to Jared Cook, and then when Jared Cook's not open. It's Drake one time. Drake, I lost. I lost by two points because I couldn't get enough out of Jared Cook. Oh last no! Night. And he was targeted on that second to last play of the game, and I think it got like deflected at the line of scrimmage. Oh, brutal. As fantasy football. All right, let's move on. Running backs. Yeah, that was really intense. <laughs> You're darn right, because running backs. This uh, is the time. This is where we're making it happen. Oh my goodness! All right. Naeem Hines, would you cut Naeem Hines? No. Ronald Jones, would you cut Ronald Jones? He's a, that's a no. Uh, that's a no. no. I'm going to hold. hold. Cam Akers? No. Hold. Malcolm Brown? I would cut. Devin Singletary? No. Zach Moss? No. See, I wouldn't cut any of these running no, backs. These, these I would are... cut Tariq Cohen. Yeah, Kare Tariq Cohen I would. I want to ask, Jason, you would cut Akers, or you would cut Brown but not Akers. So the way that I view this season, because of the broken figure for Malcolm Brown, which – Let's say he plays through that. He still has a broken finger. <laughs> That's a scary proposition for a running back whose primary responsibility is do not fumble. Um, but as the season goes on, I think Cam Akers overtakes Malcolm Brown. I, I don't see Malcolm Brown as the guy who is going to hold on to this number one uh, of the three-headed monster role as the season goes on. So it's like if I can't start Malcolm Brown now, which I don't think I can, I'm not holding him for some future day where Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson take over as, as the lead guys. All right, so this is where the major part of the waiver decisions are to be made, the running back position. Saquon Barkley out for the year, Christian McCaffrey out. How heavily do you invest this week? That is the question. It is just week three, but if you're the CMC uh, manager, if you are the Saquon manager, you've got to make an important decision on how much you invest on the big names this week, which could include Jarek McKinnon. Ironically, in all the leagues I'm in, Jarek McKinnon's already rostered. Well, I mean, he showed up week one. He already, he was already producing in the in the passing game, which is what we want our running backs to do. What's tough here but is let, let me put the names out there, okay, and, and then you can you can weigh in. But Mike Davis, 
running back for the Carolina Panthers, had eight catches last week. Jarek McKinnon, we just uh, we've talked about what's going on in in San Francisco, um, and then you know beyond those two big names, Daryl Henderson probably comes to mind. Where are you with these? Put it in the context of how much fab you would you would bid. All right, my number one running back pickup of the week isn't on any of these teams. Is not in a replacement running back for any of these teams. It is Joshua Kelly from the Los Angeles Chargers. He is still widely available, and he is locked in to me. His his role is secure. Twenty three carries. He's getting some targets. He is splitting time with Austin Eckler. He looks like he's going to be the goal line back moving forward for this team. So I actually have full confidence in Joshua Kelly's role moving forward. These other players, it's spot starts, it's uh, spin the wheel of the New York Giants. I feel more confident in Mike Davis, the backup running back for the Carolina Panthers, than I do any of the Giants. Jay, how are you viewing the running backs with the your confidence level? Yeah, I, I, I think you bring up a good point in Joshua Kelly. I don't know that he would be my number one, but the nice thing is his is not temporary, right? Like Mike Davis. He out-touched Austin Eckler. Yeah, and, and I think that was because of the surprising game script where they were up. Uh, we were expecting them to be down, and this wouldn't be a Joshua Kelly game. But they play against the Carolina Panthers this coming week. So Joshua Kelly is a guy you could pick up and start right off the bat, and I think you'll you'll be happy with the results on the other side of that same game. Mike Davis – uh, look, he's go. He's it. He, you know, it's not like where the Giants. You you go. Is it Deion Lewis? Is it Wayne Gallman? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I want to start either. I think Mike Davis is going to be an absolutely fine start. He's not going to come in and replace CMC. Goodness gracious, no. But he will be involved. He'll and, and he's a he's got a three down skill set. But how how much would you invest in terms of a fat fat bit? Let's say you're the CMC owner. And you have to make a decision on Mike Davis. What are you investing percentage wise of your budget? I'm probably forced to put in 30% of my budget. You're not going to get him. I'm probably forced to maybe put just, in more. That, that's what I mean of you. Is don't, he a must add for you yeah, as the CMC manager? 100%. I mean, I, I think you, you desperately will need him. Uh, if if you need a start now, the nice thing is, and and why I say thirty percent is because there are a handful. Jerick McKinnon is the next guy to me. Uh, I I think I would like Jerick McKinnon more than Mike Davis because Jerick McKinnon's role could be season long, unlike Mike Davis's. It, once Raheem Mostert comes back and is healthy, Jer you could probably still start Jerick McKinnon. I could easily see Jerick McKinnon usurping. Tevin Coleman, when when Tevin Coleman oh, is yeah, back, I think that's done. The you know this is a good running team. The Kyle Shanahan system is good. McKinnon's looked good. I like McKinnon. He would probably be my number one claim. I've got a bold prediction for you in that Carolina backfield. I predict that Curtis Samuel will receive ten rushing attempts. I don't hate this it. next week. That's I mean, super spice. I, he I, had four last week it. with McCaffrey healthy. He is going to complement. Mike Davis. They have Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore on the outside. I think Curtis Samuel is a very interesting speculative ad in play because he's going to receive, you know, some uh, attention in the passing game too. But if you can give him eight to ten carries on the ground, I'm just saying. It's yeah, inter no, it's I, interesting. I do not mind that at all. Speaking directly to the New York Giants backfield and projecting what I think is going to happen because we. We don't know here, people. This is the, These are murky waters with the Giants' backfield. Saquon is out. We know that Devonta Freeman is visiting yep. the, the New York Giants. That does not mean that he is going to sign. If he does, you have to envision I, that Freeman is the guy. For sure. But I don't know if we were going to have that information before the waiver, waiver wire runs. And... You had Deion Lewis. He was active as the backup running back for the Giants this past week. Wayne Gallman was inactive. We have at least some evidence. Last year, different team, different regime running things. But when Saquon misses time, it was Wayne Gallman. He was he was the guy who has a, more of a skill set to touch the ball a bunch. And I believe that is, in fact, why Wayne Gallman was inactive. Yes. Deion Lewis was the compliment running back. It's like the... 
You don't have Saquon and Gallman active, and then if you think Deion Lewis is a better third down back, you you have to go with your game plan. So I, I'm taking the shot on Wayne Gallman right now. Everyone is going to be spending up on Freeman on the speculative, hoping he signs with the Giants ad. And I'm going in on Wayne Gallman. I'm going to try and sneak him away a bit cheaper because even if Freeman is the guy, how good is Freeman going to be? Not for yeah, but if football. Freeman's the guy, how good is Wayne Gallman? Oh no, be? but that's why I'm saying it's it's a it's a cheap. I'm not going, I'm not I'm not going a huge percent of my fab here. I'm talking try and sneak Wayne Gallman away with ten to fifteen percent because oh golly, that's a lot. No, no, that is a lot for a for a, a part of a two or three headed Giants backfield. It, Freeman is going to cost people it, fifty plus percent. I don't know if I'd sign Wayne Gallman for free. Oh, I would sign Wayne Gallman for free, and I, I would put him ahead of Deion Lewis, certainly. Um, I, I agree with Mike's narrative that he would be the primary running back, but I also agree that I wouldn't spend up for him because if Wayne Gallman comes in, he's not getting the Saquon workload. He's going to split. I would be signing Devonta Freeman over both of those players. Yeah, my, my order would be Gallman, Freeman, and then I don't think I'd sign Deion Lewis, but Deion Lewis would be third ahead of all three of those is Daryl Henderson to me. Uh, I you know to me the the Mike Davis, Jarek McKinnon, and Daryl Henderson those are my main pickups this week. I would order them: Jarek McKinnon, Mike Davis, Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson has Buffalo this week, then the Giants, then Washington. It's just a little bit murky as to how many players will be rostered. I definitely see him as an add. He was 12 for 81 and one last week. Had two uh, catches for 40 yards. Looked really good. That was uh, the that was the Darnell Anderson we always dreamed for. <laughs> I would say that Mike Davis has the most secure opportunity if Joshua Kelly is not available. That's then this all this chatter. This is why Joshua Kelly is my number one guy. Yeah, and, and, and I would and he's go more, hard. Yeah, he's more rostered. So there are you know 39 percent of Yahoo leagues as opposed to six percent for Mike Davis. So um, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson My will probably – you, you got to remember last year he, he received goal line work in this offense. He did. He also scored on four of the six attempts he had inside the red zone. He did. And he will get that work again. Jared McKinnon and Jeff Wilson will both be involved. I would be putting um, – if you can spend a lot less fab and you're just kind of adding somebody that you need a spot start, like Wilson's going to cost you a lot less fab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he may go through unclaimed. They won't give McKinnon – all the work by any stretch of the imagination in this offense, not with him coming off the injury, not with the fact that Wilson's had involvement in this offense. Yep. Uh, this is going to be so crazy. Yeah, it, it's, I just can't wait to see how all these chips fall. It's, it's unbelievable. I do think, look, Jeff Wilson's always been good and, and I agree, but McKinnon, McKinnon's going to have a really good fantasy stretch while most roots out. Let me ask you this. If you, if let's we're gonna take McKinnon out because I think that you can get him for a little bit less. Would you, with how crazy and murky this is, with no real information at the time of this recording, going in on a waiver that's gonna run Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, depending on your system, would you punt on those guys and let the rest of your league spend the? I'm telling you, you're going to see sixty plus percent of Fab spent on. Davis, Freeman, of these just like, I'm hoping. Meanwhile, you have Frank Gore, starter for the New York Jets, who will see carries. He will see some targets. 21 carries this past week against San Francisco. For 63 yards. I, I, I get that, but San Francisco is a very good defense. Uh, he's going to play the Colts. Or even, plug your nose, <laughs> Miles Gaskin, who saw seven targets this past week. He's over 65% of the snaps for the Miami Dolphins. Or are you going to try and sneak those guys off, or would you rather get your chips in on the the high-stakes players from the Giants and Mike Davis from the Panthers? I am not as excited about all of these running backs, unless I am the CMC you, or you Saquon. You, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't have a choice. I, I understand, Mike. What I'm saying is I'm not so excited about the top end that I, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you. Okay, that I'm okay. willing to – if I'm 2-0 and o and I am and I have fab that I want to save, I don't want to drop 60% of my fab budget on Mike Davis for a couple speculative starts, not knowing exactly what it's going to look like 
on an offense that we haven't seen a lot of, I would rather get a spot start out of some of these other other names that you're mentioning. Not Miles Gaskin. <laughs> but but Frank Gore, I'm fine with a spec, you know, a one week right. fill in of Frank Gore. I'd rather the only player that's worth a big fab investment to me is Joshua Kelly because of the long term implications. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Brutal. I, yeah, I mean I I I personally would have McKinnon up there as well, but uh that's all a matter of what you believe happens. I think McKinnon is relevant the rest of season and dominant the next few weeks. Dominant. I, I, that's that is my current belief. The, he the had running four back, touches last week. The the running back for the San Francisco 49ers will be valuable. I of that I'm confident, and then I'm also confident that he's the running back for the 49ers, the primary running back for the next couple of weeks. So you put those, you know, one plus one. You got equal, some algebra going I, on. I hope it equals two. It all did, it just comes down to Mostert's availability. If sure. he plays this week, I don't know if you'll feel the same, but we'll find out. Tight ends. Dallas Goddard flopped last week. Um, disappointing. Yeah, Chris Herndon, I think you can let go of the dream. Yes. Which here's, sucks because I, I really here's like what, Chris Herndon. Here's what you do for, with Chris Herndon. If you're uh, playing Dynasty, you try and go get Chris Herndon real cheap and hope that Adam Gase is gone because the players that get away from the black hole just end up being good. We have... Another Robbie example. Anderson. Robbie Anderson. Look who's really, really good and was not. Kenyon Drake, Ryan Tannehill. It, the, the list just goes on and on of his ineptitude. So, I mean, that's I'm, I'm being a little jocular here. But also, Chris Herndon, once he gets away from Adam Gase, is going to be a good player. Main waiver wire pickups, though, at the tight end position have to be Johnny Smith and Mike Kosicki. Um, you also can look at Dalton Schultz after the monster week. But Jonu Smith is still set up against Minnesota this upcoming week. Gasicki's on Thursday night after the breakout game um, facing Jacksonville. Who do you prefer out of those two? I, I like both players quite a bit, but Jonu would be my guy. Uh, for me too. Uh, you know, early from draft season, he was, you know, bizarrely my tight end seven, and he has broken out. He is necessary with the current injury, and his matchup against Minnesota is phenomenal, but I'm – very happy with Gasicki as well. I'd, I'd bid heavily on those two. I mean, they're probably, you know, they're available in about half of leagues, maybe a little under half if you're on Yahoo. Um, but they're out there to a lot of leagues. And I would make sure, like, if I had a good tight end, I would still sign these guys. They're too good to be on uh, on the waiver wire, and they're going to be, like, I don't draft would people to trade Would you drop Evan Ingram for either of them if you, ha if you didn't want to roster two? I would, yeah, if I didn't want to roster two, I'd rather have Jonu Smith than Evan Ingram. I just traded Evan Ingram as almost a throwaway to get Noah Fant um, because I, I believe in Fant and Jonu Smith and Gasicki as those hopeful breakout potential guys, and I'm sick of Evan Ingram. You just don't want it. You don't want the experience. I, you know, I bought in for the first time, and it's. It's been one of those what's your return policy purchases? Oh no. How long do I have to make an exchange? Uh Mike, Dalton Schultz, Moali Cox, Jordan Reed, put those players in order. Uh it would be Dalton Schultz would be the the top option here. Would you like to make him a my guy? <laughs> like I said, anything Dalton Schultz does it's I'm, a proxy for I'm Blake. I'm taking the credit for it, baby, because the opportunity was there for Blake Jarwin, and Blake Jarwin is a better player or better pass That's catching tight tough end. Tough to say after how Dalton Schultz is playing. Stop it! I I will not I will not stand I mean, for Blake this. Blake Jarwin didn't do much before that injury. I will I not stand Dalton for Schultz, this tarnishing of Blake Jarwin's Dalton Schultz name. Is just waiting on this to show. emerge. This was really good for the Cowboys to allow the magnificence that is Dalton Schultz to. Really show I hate you he both. should have been the starter all along. Yeah. But yes, Dalton Schultz, he, he is absolutely, you, you should stash him. Like, or you could pick him up and play him. Ten targets. And I know that the, the game kind of got out of hand for the Cowboys. But Mo Ali Cox, a.k.a. Gigantor, it's tough right now because, we one, we don't know the status of Jack Doyle. Two, we don't know the status. What will the team do once Jack Doyle is back? Is this just... The veteran gets his job right back, despite the fact that uh, in his career, uh, I, I, what's I'm trying to remember the stat from that JJ. Yeah, like yeah. The fourth no, I remember the right stat. Now. Yeah, but, it was basically there's been 30 times 
when Jack Doyle's had five or more targets as the tight end of the Indianapolis Colts, and he's had one 100-yard game out of those 30 games with five or more targets. Moiley Cox has had one game in his career with five or more targets, and he has one 100-yard game. He is gigantor. Man, <laughs> people, if you have not seen Moiley Cox, he is – just he's the biggest man I've ever seen in my entire life. This is a Paul Bunyan situation, but uh, moving back to reality. Mike is a bit obsessed with his physical size. But back to reality. The team is better when Mo Alley Cox is out there stretching the field. He can do things that Jack Doyle cannot. But you're not you're not going to you're not you're not going to put a huge amount of fab on him because you just you don't know if he will actually have the starting role. It's not he's, long term. He's free. I mean, you don't have to. You, if you want Mo Ali Cox, you can go place, you know, one percent or a zero dollar bid, and you're and you're fine. Now, here's a name I really want to bring up because I actually I would rather have him than than Mo Ali Cox. I would personally rather have him than Logan Thomas. It's Drew Sample, and here's the thing: you want Drew Sample more one, than Logan Thomas? One hundred percent. Who's you're a wild man? I call me wild. It is very, I just did. It is very <laughs> rare. It is very rare that on our in-season waiver shows we can give a dynasty waiver pickup. But Drew Sample is available in not every dynasty. Mo Ali Cox is available in a lot sure, of places. Sure, I will take Drew Sample over Mo Ali Cox in a heartbeat. Those two guys are available in dynasty leagues, and you should absolutely make a waiver pickup on them. Uh, look, CJ Uzama has never gotten it done, and he was dominating with Joe Burrow and then unfortunately got injured for the season. When he went out, Drew Sample dominated 10 targets for eight receptions, 52 yards, and I think, look, the, the Bengals' defense is not going to be stopping people. Joe Burrow's going to have to throw the ball, and it looks like he uses the tight end, so Drew Sample has an opportunity to actually be really fantasy relevant, and I know... In a lot of dynasty leagues, there's there's you know three or four teams that just have absolutely no tight end available to start. Drew Sample's at least out there. Favorite defensive pickups this week? Ooh, there's there's a good amount of them. Uh, Tampa Bay would be the number one. Uh, they are taking on Denver, but they're rostered in about half of leagues. But I would be looking to them, and then I would put. I'd put my number two claim on the Colts. Where they, they get to take on the New York Jets, and that's just a that's a matchup I am happy to get in on. Yeah, the Arizona Cardinals are also one. I, you know, it's it's tough. Because do you want the Cardinals versus uh, Detroit, or do you want the Colts versus the Jets? Yeah, I guess versus the Jets, I certainly want the Colts, but okay. they're not available in a, in a in a ton of leagues. Um, Arizona's been surprisingly effective for fantasy. Uh, granted, Detroit, the matchup looks good, but if Kenny Galladay is indeed back, yeah, it's not that, as good. It's hard to know today, and I think we would all project that Kenny Galladay will be back this week. Yeah. All right, let's hear this. Uh, let's hear this drop again. Full stream ahead. Oh, it's just as as good the second time as it was yeah. the first. <laughs> all right, are you dropping? Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, or Matthew Stafford? Uh, sure. I'm not dropping Stafford with – I'm projecting Kenny Galladay is back. Man, Carson Wentz I would be willing to move on from. Drew Brees, that's brutal. You're you're willing – you're already willing to pull the plug. And so I, I agree with what you said. Stafford I'm not dropping. I think Galladay's back and Stafford – should be should be a good fantasy option. Carson Wentz is done for me until he's he's looked poor. His receiving options aren't the best. I am totally fine moving on and then picking him back up off of waivers if he has a good game. I I just don't think he's someone you you have to grip tightly. Um, and yeah, then, this is the point of the year when you have to if you want to be a good fantasy player, you have to let go of what you thought would happen on I, certain players. Yeah, I mean instead of rostering Carson Wentz as your backup tight end, waiting and hoping he gets it together. If I could, you know, it, it, and I and I picked up someone else to play, I would much, much rather have a Jarek McKinnon or Joshua Kelly where it's like then a second backup quarterback. Um, did I say You did say tight backup tight end. end. Yeah, right. that's okay. That's we let, let you just keep going. All right, so for a streaming candidate this week. Yeah, Mike, who you got? Uh, I have Mike's pick. 
but um, <laughs> he got it in first, so I'll share mine. This is gross. He's not a good quarterback. He will never be a franchise quarterback, but this is the point of fantasy football. You can stream mediocre quarterbacks in a plus matchup and be absolutely fine. It's Mitchell Trubisky, the Chicago Bears quarterback, currently a top 15 quarterback. He's been okay. He lit it up in week one, and the thing is, is he plays against Atlanta. Oh, I, Are you in love? I am. I, I mean, have, this is the second time you've picked him. I have. Uh, Mitch, if you're listening, you're not good. And at football, um, but he, quarterbacking. He, he, did you get? Will you give him credit for a great, great start last week? Great. I, he was he was really really good. He plays well in stretches, and I think he will have a stretch this week against Atlanta, who has just been terrorized. Granted, Atlanta so far has played really good quarterbacks, so you know we'll we'll see kind of. Is it the defense or was it, you know, Dak Prescott? Was it Russell Wilson? And now it's going to be Mitch Trubisky. But the the reality is their defense is not great. And Mitchell Trubisky should be able to do enough. They're going to have to keep up with Atlanta's very good-looking offense. So I think he's a great streaming do you, candidate. Do you keep a bucket around you when you drop Carson Wentz to sign Mitchell Trubisky and play him? Yeah, I mean, I'm on the toilet when that happens. <laughs> oh, I, I, no. I, don't, I don't do that from, you know, my office. No way. <laughs> All right, my streaming quarterback this week, it's Gardner Minshew. Yeah, baby. Taking on the Miami Dolphins on Thursday night football. He's still only rostered in 20% of leagues in, on ESPN, 32% on Yahoo. Has the schedule that Mike has kept bringing up, Miami, Cincinnati, Houston, Detroit for the next four weeks. Ooh. I will be disappointed. Like if if DJ Chark can't play on Thursday, one less you know kind of big play option for Gardner that will make it tough. But he's just getting it done week to week. I mean, the first two games of the of the year have been nothing short of outstanding for Gardner. I mean, he had uh, he went from completing ninety five percent of his passes, Mike, down to a mere sixty seven percent this past mm, week. Very disappointing. Three touchdowns each week. Um, very. Looking very reliable, and and when you get through week six before the bye, he might be a top ten tight uh, tight end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> might be a top ten quarterback at that point. Well, he's so. a top ten quarterback right now through the first two weeks, and his two matchups were the Colts and the and the Titans. Pretty decent defense, right? Yeah, I, I love it. Love Gardner moving forward for this next stretch. I've got Ryan Tannehill, Minnesota man. It's uh, it's not good up in the north for the Minnesota Vikings defense and to be fair the offense it, it looked pretty rough last other week. than the offense and defense though a lot of <laughs> optimism surrounding the franchise and uh Anthony they just lost Anthony Barr yeah like the, the defense hits just keep coming and coming for the Minnesota Vikings they are bleeding fantasy points Ryan Tannehill uh, not as available as Gardner or Mitchell Trubisky but if he is you're firing him up this week versus Minnesota. The bandwagon, the Cardinals bandwagon is available to all Vikings fans over the next few weeks. Oh, certainly. And it's it's been a fun ride. Yeah, it's it's been good. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. A DJ Moore signed jersey, $55. <laughs> oh. And 47 cents. You have to you have to pay the 47 cents as well. Oh. But there's hundreds of daily auctions. I just traded for DJ Moore in the listener league. Did you guys see that? I saw it. I, I made it. It was essentially I. I moved uh, Lamar Jackson, and I moved oh, did, Kareem Hunt. You went and got Kyler, and I got Kyler, yeah. and I got DJ Moore. That's because, an Andy special. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my son is uh, also co-managing that team with me. Pretty big Kyler fan out here in Arizona. So, use the registration code Ballers at pristineauction.com to get a ten dollar credit. That'll do it for today's show. But we'll be back tomorrow with yeah. another one. Great news, everybody. Make sure you're staying safe out there. Good luck tonight on your waivers. Make the right choices. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.